You may have also seen, as I say, in the last year or so, 18 months, a dark net popping up called I2P. I2P has actually been around as long as Tor, if not a little bit longer. It's based on the same concept as Tor around this, this mixed net, also, again, with onion-based routing. But it's not had the same popularity which Tor has had, probably because it's a little bit clunky to use, and Tor have really focused on making it easy to use. You know, if you want to use Tor, you just download the Tor browser, and it just works. That's not currently the case um, with I2P, it's a little, little bit more complicated than that. But once you get it set up, it works, in a, it works in a similar way. Obviously, the protocols are slightly different, but in terms of a conceptual level, it's, it's more or less working in the same way. Now, one of the beauties about I2P is that it hasn't had as much scientific scrutiny as Tor. In fact, it's had very little scientific scrutiny. And there are many attacks which we know about which can be used on the Tor network to identify individuals, users, and sites. And many of those attacks are likely to be applicable to I2P and, in fact, be much easier to deploy on something like I2P because I2P has had so little scrutiny when compared with the, with the other darknets. So we've seen some darknet actors in the last um, 18 months or so um, particularly some of the drugs marketplaces, which are getting constantly DDoS attacked. And obviously, if the site goes down, they can't make any money. Um, so they've been looking at moving their sites to I2P. In my view, that's a foolish thing. For them. It's great for us, but it's a foolish thing for them to do simply because I2P um, is, less, is, is less secure than Tor because of that lack of scrutiny which Tor, which Tor, Tor has had. Um, so I've, it may be a transient thing, this sort of shift to I2P. I'd be surprised if we see over the next few years, a significant shift to ITP. I think it's just at one or two sites at the moment, and it will probably at some point revert back to Tor, as is often the case. The other dark net which we've seen pop up recently is ZeroNet. Um, ZeroNet is built on top of the Bitcoin, uh, the, sorry, the BitTorrent protocol, which ultimately is a file sharing protocol. It's kind of like the successor to Napster, if you remember Napster. Now, you know, if you were to share a movie on on um, BitTorrent, for example, often your movie is broken up into chunks. When you first connect to the network, you start sharing those chunks with other people in the network. And eventually, once enough people in the network have copies of that file, you can leave the network and people can still download the file because there's enough people hosting those chunks of, the, of, the, of those files. Now, ZeroNet, as I say, built on that protocol, so the same sort of principle applies. Um, people publish a darknet site, which is essentially is a file, a packaged file of, of the site itself. Um, and when they first connect to the network, they start sharing chunks of that file with other people within the network. And then once those, those chunks have been shared, the site then becomes available you know, even when that original poster leaves the network. So there is a small window of opportunity with ZeroNet publishers where you can potentially identify the publisher of the site when they first start sharing it. Obviously, once they've finished sharing it, it's being shared by other people, and so those are not the original publishers of, of those, site, those sites anymore. So ZeroNet, in many ways, is a weak darknet as far as providing guarantees around anonymity and privacy, particularly around the, the hosters and the, and the visitors to these sites.